Hello, St. Peter's. Welcome back for another Library Time, our chapter book edition. My friends are here. They're so excited to see what's going to happen next in the case of the Library Monster. We started reading last week. We read the first three chapters. So if you haven't listened to that yet, go back and watch that first before you catch up with us here reading the next couple of chapters. All right, so we've got Ralph, Magic Monkey, Daisy's over here, and of course we have Joy with her jar of joy. We're gonna spread some joy after we read a little bit. All right, so if you've had a busy day, if you've been doing a lot of work, I know we have testing this week, you're just feeling kind of tired, sit back and relax and just listen to a fun story. So remember Buddy, he works at the school. He goes to school every day with Connor, his human, and Connor's mom, and he listens to children read to him in the library, or he sits in his, in his mom's office, right? So they just had a reptile guy come, come visit, which he wasn't allowed to go to the show, but he was so anxious to get back to the library because do you remember what was happening? Right, there was a creature in the library and it was pushing books out and it was scurrying up behind the shelves. So we need to find out what happens next. See if he can figure out what this creature is. He calls it a monster. Chapter four is called, I smell a monster. I, I smell that monster again as soon as mom opens the door to the school the next day. I run a little bit ahead of her sniffing, sniffing, sniffing. Oh, I don't think the monster is in this hallway right now, but it's been here. It's been here recently. Hey, what's all that flaky stuff over by the wall? Stay with me, buddy. Mom pulls me closer to her. But there's something over there, I say. Don't you see it? I think it belongs to the monster. It might be part of its skin. Whoa, can this monster actually take his skin off? Oh, maybe he's playing a game with me. Maybe he's left some skin as a clue and now he wants me to find him. Mom steers me around the corner. I don't smell any monsters down this hallway. Can we go back the other way? I ask mom. Maybe we should check the library and see if the monster went back in there. Mom has no idea what I'm saying. I'm not sure she even knows I'm trying to talk to her. <coughs> it's so frustrating when humans don't understand. Well, mom leads me into the main office and then into her office and points to my pillow. Lie down, buddy, she says. I lie down. Mom shuffles over to her desk, turns on her computer and sits down. The light above her flickers one or seven times. She raises her eyes, sighs, and gets to work. When Ellie comes in, she says good morning to mom, then tosses me a treat. <gasps> hey, this is a new treat, beef instead of liver. I love beef treats, they're my favorite food. Can I please have another one? I ask Ellie with my eyes. The phone rings and Ellie reaches for the phone instead of a treat. Hello, Four Lakes Elementary School, she says. Yes, yes, hmm. I don't think so, but I'll check and get back to you. Ellie hangs up the phone and then calls into mom's office. That was Bob the reptile guy on the phone. He thinks he may have left a box of baby mice in the library when he was here yesterday. Do you know if we found a box of mice? <gasps> mice? Mom's eyebrows rise. Do you mean live mice? Well, that's what it sounds like, Ellie says. I doubt it, Mom says, but check with Mrs. Warner to be sure. Okay, Ellie picks, up, Ellie picks up her phone and calls Mrs. Warner. While she's on the phone, Mr. Poe trumps into the main office. Hello, Mr. Poe, I say. I like Mr. Poe. He always smells good. Today, he smells like wood and oil. Now, I don't think Mr. Poe sees me lying here in Mom's office. He steps over to the board with all the keys on it. He stares at it for a while, then turns toward mom's office. Do you know where the key to the furnace room is, Sarah? He asks. Isn't it hanging on the board? Mom asks. Nope, it's not, says Mr. Poe. Mom scoots her chair back and marches over to that board. I can see from where I'm lying there that there's an empty hook on the bottom row. Is there supposed to be a key on that hook? 
That's odd, Mom says, scratching her chin. If it's not hanging here with the other keys, I don't know where it would be. When was the last time you used it? I don't know, Mr. Poe says. I haven't been in the furnace room since last spring, but it's getting colder outside, so I wanted to check the furnace today. I noticed that key was missing last week, Ellie says as she hangs up the phone. I assumed you had it, Mr. Poe. Nobody else ever goes down there. I don't have it, Mr. Poe says. It sounds like there's another mystery to solve around here. The case of the missing key. All of a sudden, the light in Mom's office flickers and goes out. Mom groans. I thought I just had a loose connection in there. Looks like I need a new bulb. I'll go get you one, Mr. Poe says. As soon as he leaves, Mrs. Christie pokes her head into the office. Are you ready to go to the library, buddy? She asks me. I'm always ready to go to the library, I say, hopping to my feet. I love the library. It's my favorite place. So before we go to the library, let's look at this picture so we see what Mr. Poe looks like. So there's their keys. One is missing. Hmm. Mrs. Christie leads me down the hall. I smell monster. I also smell pencils, crayons, glue, paint, lots and lots of humans. As soon as, as, soon as we turn down the hall that leads to the library, I smell monster again. The scent is getting stronger. Now we're in the library. I'm still sniffing, sniffing, sniffing. Where is that monster? Do you need to go outside, buddy? Mrs. Christie asks. Maybe I should take you out before the kids come. No, I don't need to go outside, I tell Mrs. Christie. I need to find the monster. But Mrs. Christie takes me outside anyway. I sigh and quickly do my business. When we get back inside, I search the library some more. I don't think the monster is here right now. So where is he? I spend the morning listening to 10 or three kids read to me. A lot of the kids bring books about reptiles today instead of books about buses. So now I know what a reptile is. A reptile breathes air, is cold-blooded, lays eggs, has skin with scales, and is a tetrapod. What's a tetrapod? I asked the kid who's reading to me right now. He smells like sugar, oatmeal, and yuck, cat. And what's cold-blooded? Sugar oatmeal cat boy keeps reading. A tetrapod has four legs or had ancestors with four legs. What? Really, I say? But I thought a snake was a reptile. Snakes don't have any legs. Thinking about snakes reminds me of Bob, the reptile guy, and all the animals he brought. I wonder if the library monster is a reptile. Maybe it belongs to Bob, the reptile guy. Maybe it escaped while he was here. Except I found the monster before I met Bob, the reptile guy. Didn't I? Oh, sometimes I have a trouble with before and after. Also, Bob, the reptile guy called and he said he was missing some baby mice. He said, didn't say anything about missing any reptiles. Your time is up, Miles, Mrs. Christie says. Oh, no, not yet, I beg. Tell me why snakes are reptiles and tell me what cold-blooded means. Miles shakes my paw. He doesn't answer any of my questions. He does give me a cracker, though. I love crackers. They're my favorite food. <laughs> then he leaves and somebody else comes to read to me, a girl. She smells about Connor's age, and she smells like sugar and strawberries, and whoa, she also smells like the monster. Whoa. So he's very excited. Have you noticed that Buddy loves every food is his favorite food every time he eats food? I like that about him. Every food is his favorite, and he also is not good with time, is he? or numbers. That's okay. He's a dog. We're going to go on to chapter five, the secret door. Who is this girl and why does she smell like the monster? Oh, the smell isn't real strong. Not as strong as it was out in the hallway a little while ago, but it's there on her hands, her stomach, her legs, her feet. Okay, buddy, Mrs. Christie says, pulling me away from the girl. Let, let's let Maya get started. Maya giggles as she drops to her knees beside me. 
She hugs a book to her chest. Mrs. Christie, Christie loosens her grip on my leash and I sniff Maya's shoulders and her neck. I think he likes you, Mrs. Christie tells Maya. But I'm not sniffing Maya because I like her. I'm sniffing her for clues. Clues to who she is. Why she smells like the monster and where the monster might be. Unfortunately, I don't smell any clues. Okay, buddy, Mrs. Christie says, time to lie down. She points at the floor. I lie down close to Maya. Maya gives me a little pat and then shows me her book. It's called Blue Tongued Skink, she says. <gasps> Blue Tongued Skink, I can hardly believe my ears or my eyes. There on the cover is a picture of the monster I saw in this very library. So a blue tongued skink is a real animal. Cat with no name didn't make it up. Maya opens the book and starts reading. I sit up so I can see the pictures better. Did you know? Oh, did you know? You smell like one of those, I ask her. Maya doesn't answer, she just keeps reading. I think it's very interesting that you smell like a blue tongued skink and you're reading a book about them, I tell her. Buddy, shh, Mrs. Christie says, putting her finger to her lips. But I can't, shh, I have too much to say. Did you know there's one of these guys, those guys somewhere in this school, I ask. I saw him in the library. I smelled him in the hallway. I don't know where he is now. Can you help me find him? Maya doesn't understand a word I'm saying. I sigh. If I can't talk to Maya, maybe I should listen to her read. Maybe she'll read something that will give me a clue to, to finding the blue-tongued skink. I start to lie, lie down when Maya reads. A blue-tongued skink can be a very nice pet. I sit back up. I can? Do you have a blue-tongued skink at your house? I ask Maya. Is that why you smell like one? Buddy, Mrs. Christie says. She turns to Maya. I don't know why he's barking so much today. Maybe he needs to go outside, Maya suggests. Maybe, Mrs. Christie says, though I just put him out a half hour ago. I don't need to go outside, I yell. I need to figure some things out. <sighs> I lie back down so I can think. And so Mrs. Christie stops wondering if I need to go outside. The reason Maya smells like a blue-tongued skink could be that she has one for a pet. If she does, it's probably not the same one I found here at school. Her blue-tongued skink is probably at her house. Unless it escaped and came to our school. No, if that happened, Maya would smell worried right now. She doesn't smell worried. She smells happy. Blue-tongued blue skinks do not lay eggs like other reptiles. Maya goes on. They give birth to live young. Other reptiles? So a blue-tongued skink is a reptile. <gasps> Maya turns a page. Blue-tongued skinks are cold-blooded, she reads. They can't control their own body temperature. Your tank should have a heater and a basking light. While Maya reads this, I make a list inside my head of everything I am learning about blue-tongued skinks. They don't lay eggs. They need heat. They need light. They need water. They like to hide. Their skin comes off in little pieces. <gasps> they eat fruit, vegetables, canned dog food, and mice. Oh. Well, none of that information helps me figure out where the blue tongue skink came from, why he's in our school, or where he might be now. Oh, so I spend the rest of the day thinking about that blue tongued skink. Now I'm back in mom's office. School is out. Mom and Ellie are still here, but all the kids have gone home. This would be a good time to go sniff around the rest of the school. Oh, but I'm supposed to stay here on my pillow. Mom told me to stay. Mom is typing away at her computer. Ellie is talking to someone on the phone. I could probably sneak away. I wouldn't have to be gone long. Well, maybe I could get back before Mom even noticed I was gone. But when Mom tells me to stay, I'm supposed to stay. That's the rule. Well, sometimes a dog has to break the rules. 
with one eye on Mom and Ellie, I keep my body low to the ground and creep past Ellie's desk, around the corner, and out into the hallway, safe. Then I put my nose to the ground and sniff. I don't smell anything unusual in this hall, or this hall, or this hall. Oh, I go down some stairs. Hey, I'd never been in this part of the school before. There are no classrooms down here, just a dark hallway that smells musty and some closed doors. It's kind of scary down here. A place a ghost would hang out. If there was one at this school, suddenly I hear footsteps on the stairs behind me. <gasps> Slow, quiet footsteps. I freeze. There's no place to run. No place to hide. Oh, no worries, it's Maya on the stairs. Oh, she says when she sees me. She is surprised to see me as I am to see her, but I wag my tail. What are you doing here, I ask. I thought all the kids went home. She puts a finger to her lips. Shh, she says. I trot along beside her. Where are we going, I ask. She doesn't answer. We stop in front of one of the closed doors. There's a sign on the door, but I can't read the words on the sign. Maya reaches into her pocket and pulls out a key. She smells nervous. What are you doing? I ask her with my eyes. She glances all around, but it's just her and me down here. I watch as she unlocks the door. She only opens it wide enough so she can squeeze through. Here's a picture of her doing that. So she has a key and the sign on the door says authorized personnel only. So that means only the people who are supposed to go in there should be in there. Do you think a student is supposed to go in there? I don't think so either. This is getting good. What's in there? I ask, trying to nose my way in. Can I come in too? The door slams closed in my face. You ready for one more chapter? Okay, it's called Stay. I sniffed the crack under the door. I smell dirt, dust, mold. What's in that room? It doesn't smell like stuff you normally smell around a school. Maya, I scratch at the door. Come back, let me in. I don't think she can hear me. I sniff some more. Now I smell spiders, mice, old books, paint. What are you doing in there, I ask. I wonder if she's supposed to be in there. Well, she had a key. She probably wouldn't have a key if she wasn't supposed to be in there. I press my ear against the door and listen. I hear banging. I also hear things moving around, big things, heavy things. Then I hear Maya cry out. Oh, no, she says. No, 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 no. Uh-oh, that doesn't sound good. I scratch at the door again. Maya, what's wrong? I'm, I sure wish I could open this door. There's a voice behind me. What are you doing all the way down here, buddy? Mr. Poe asks. Does Mrs. Key know you're running around loose? I don't know, I say. That's not important. What's important is Maya's in there, and I think she could be in trouble. Mr. Poe grabs hold of my leash and moves me away from the door. Wait, I say, digging my paws into the floor. We have to help Maya. Oh, but the floor is slippery and Mr. Poe is strong. He pulls me across the floor, up the stairs, around the corner, down the hall, all the way back to the office. Oh, Ellie raises her head when we walk in. She draws in her breath. Oh, I didn't know Buddy was loose, did you, Sarah? No, I hear mom before I can see her. She comes out to Ellie's office and takes my leash from Mr. Poe. Thanks for finding him. He's usually much better about staying on his pillow. She looks at me like I'm a bad dog. No problem, Mr. Poe says. Now, if only I could find that key to the furnace room as easily as I found your dog. I'll call the former principal of this school and see if she has any idea where it might be, Mom says, leaning against the door jamb. If not, I'll call a locksmith to come and unlock that door. We've got to get in there and check the furnace pretty soon. Mr. Poe nods. Sounds good, he says. Then he leaves. Mom points to my pillow. Lie down, buddy, she says. I go and lie down and stay this time.
Mom says, returning to her desk. I stay, even though I really, really, really want to know what Maya is up to. Is she in trouble? Does anyone know where she is? After 10 or 100 minutes, I hear footsteps in the hallway, running footsteps. Ellie gets up and goes out in the hall. No running, she says. The running footsteps become walking footsteps. A small voice says, sorry. Maya, I sit up. Down, mom says. Oh, I lie back down. I'm pretty sure that was Maya's voice I heard. That, that means she's out of the secret room. Well, that's good. But why would she run down the hall? Where is she going in such a hurry? I hear the door to the playground open and close. I can't quite see out mom's window when I'm lying down. So I stretch my neck as high as I can and watch Maya zoom across the playground. She calls out to a group of boys who are playing football in the grass. Mom's window is closed, so I can't hear what she's saying. But I see a boy stop and turn toward Maya. He's a little older than she is. She motions for him to come over to her. It's too hard to see like this, so I sit all the way up. I watch Maya's hands move in big circles. Whatever she's telling him must be very important. Then they race toward the school. Buddy, Mom says. I drop to my belly. Stay, Mom says. Okay, okay, I say. There's nothing to see outside right now anyway. I hear an outside door open and close again. It must be Maya and that boy. I wait, but they don't ever pass by the office. Are they really inside the school? I listen, I sniff. I don't hear or smell anything unusual. After 50, 11 minutes, Ellie says goodbye and leaves. Stay, mom says to me again, even though I have not gotten up. Finally, after 70, 12 more minutes, mom turns off her computer and reaches for her keys. We must be leaving soon. Okay, buddy, mom says. <gasps> that means I can get up. Mom picks up my leash, turns out the lights in her office in the main office, and locks the main office door behind us. As we move down the hall, I am sniffing, 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 but I can't tell whether Meyer and the boy are inside the school or not. Outside, I see my friend Jazzy snoozing in her backyard. Jazzy is a pug. She and I met at obedience school a long, long time ago when I helped her and our friend Muffin get back to their real humans. Jazzy, I call. She raises her head. Buddy, hi. She scampers to the fence to greet me. Mom is not heading to the fence. She's heading toward the car. Did you, did you see a girl that smells like strawberries and sugar? I asked Jazzy over my shoulder. That's the best way to describe Maya. The strawberries and sugar smell is much stronger than the monster smell. She was out here a little while ago. She, oh, she was out here a little while ago. Uh, she was talking to a boy. Do you mean Maya? Yes, I saw her. She was talking to her brother, Alex, Jazzy says. Oh, I wag my tail. You know them? Mom opens the back door for me. Hop up, she says. I pretend I don't know what mom wants me to do. Did you hear what Maya said to her brother? I asked Jazzy. Something about mice, Jazzy says. What about them, I ask. I don't know, Jazzy says. Did you hear them say anything else? Jazzy thinks for a minute. She also said Felix, Freckles, and Fluffy are gone. Who are Felix, Freckles, and Fluffy, I ask. I have no idea, Jazzy says. Another mystery. That's where we're going to stop for today. Well, this is getting really exciting. What do you think Maya's doing down there? Hmm. That's what we're going to have to find out next time. So we now know that the monster is a blue-tongued skink and it's a reptile. We're still looking for the mice that maybe Maya knows something about and wondering what happened to that blue-tongued skink or the monster, as Buddy likes to call it in the library. I guess we'll find out next week. All right, should we spread some joy? What do you say, Joy? I think it's a great idea. Let's shake it up and see how we can spread some joy today. Put the lid on the ground because it always falls off. All right. I had a couple students add some things in here, so who knows? Maybe we'll get a new one. Whoa. Dropping things. Let's see. Oh, I love this one. This is a great and very easy way to spread some joy. It says, 
Smile at everyone you see. How simple is that? Just smile. Because sometimes if someone's having a bad day and they see you smile at them, they might smile back. And have you ever tried feeling sad when you're smiling? It's really hard to do. Have you ever been in a really bad mood and someone makes you laugh and then you try to get in that bad mood again? You can't do it. You have to keep smiling. So I know there's some places when you go inside places, like at stores and things, we still have to wear a mask. But even when you wear a mask, watch. If you smile, you can see it with your eyes. So watch, I'm not smiling. Now I'm smiling. Can you see the difference? So even when someone's wearing a mask, you'll be able to tell when they are, they are smiling at you. I'm gonna go smile at everyone that I see for the rest of my day. How about you? Good plan. All right, so three more chapters. We're in the case of the library monster and look at this. We're already halfway through our book. I'm excited to see how it ends up. So next week we'll read a little bit more and finish it up the week after that. Sound like a good plan? I think so. Do you guys like that? Everybody's happy. I hope you're happy. Go smile at everyone you see. Enjoy the beautiful sunny weather this week. And as always, boys and girls, until next time, keep spreading your joy.